Tonight is the night. I'm going to camp in my newly converted car for the first time and we're going to test it out. My name's Alex and I recently decided that I want to travel the world in my little car. Without any experience of converting vehicles, I did my best to turn my tiny VW Polo into something that I could travel and live in. I pulled apart the seats, fitted a number of storage boxes and laid out a blow up camping mattress as a bed. Oh, and I also equipped my car with a leisure battery so I could have power on my travels. All this cost me a total of 150 quid, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna run into some issues along the way. Before I head further afield and travel into different countries, I feel like I need to give it a test run somewhere local. So my plan for the next couple of nights was to do some stealth camping in some nearby towns and see if my car would be up for the job. I was overwhelmed by the support and all the people who left comments on the last video. Uh, so many of you had so much good quality info and recommendations of things I should do to convert this car, different types of vehicles I should have instead. And basically, it seems like you guys watching should be the people making these videos, not me, because I have no clue what I'm doing. Since I saw you last time, I have done a few little changes. The good thing about this car conversion is that everything just comes out very easily. This is really awkward, I don't know why I did it like that. So I'm still just taking apart my car. I managed to take off all the headrests, which means the seats lay down flatter. Let's do this again, shall we? I know you're laughing at me for using my pine bedside table, but I want it to feel like home in here. And without that, I feel a bit lost, you know? It's got a certain smell as well, which just reminds me of my bedroom. It's so impractical though, because that's just going to fall over every time I go around a corner. One of the main comments I got on the last video was, you need to secure that battery, mate. If you don't secure the battery, then it can tip over and spill acid everywhere, and there can be big problems. So I took your words into consideration and did some work. Ow. See, I'm really tall, so I can't put the battery behind my seat. It means I can't move the seat back now. It's nice and solid though. It just means I have to drive like this. Where else could I put the battery where it's not gonna move? I can still tip over if I crash though. Guys, I'm realizing it. I'm realizing it's very slowly and painfully that my car is too small to live in. I know you all told me, I thought, I thought I could do this, but I, I don't, I'm trying to find somewhere to put the battery and I don't know what to do. The only place I can actually keep that leisure battery where it doesn't move around is behind the passenger seat. But I would consider this the safest option. That's there. It, it physically can't tip over because this is locked in place. And then I put my storage box there. So if I put my camping stove on top of the battery, that actually makes it level. Okay, this might work. There we go, we've got a new sleeping setup where the battery is secure. It's not going anywhere. And then when I want to use it, I simply have to just fold that back, take this off, unplug these things, and then away we go. I mean, it's really not ideal, is it? This is all a stupid idea. I should just get a van, get some experts to help me convert it, and then we're sorted. When I was packing up the car today to go off on this trip, I realised I had to leave so many of my home comforts at home. I couldn't take them with me because I just simply don't have space. It's so cramped in here. There's, there's hardly enough space to lie down in it. Right, I'm interested to see what my dad thinks of me. So dad, what do you think of your 23 year old son doing stuff like this? I'd get a van. Hmm. Look at my feet. <laughs> They're going out the windscreen. You know what? That's not terrible. 
But you don't have to leave your bed to go to the kitchen, and you don't have to leave <laughs> your bed to go. There is a little bit of work to do. There we go. Oh, look at that. I'm going to have my little lamp on, read my book. <laughs> it's going to be so... It's perfect. There we go. We've got our bedside lamp on our pine bedside table. Well, hey, there's something very satisfying about having power whilst I'm not in my house. I'm very new to this. Right, let's have some food. Mmm. Pizza. So this is the town where I'm going to be camping. That's the view up there. That's the view out there. And that's the view out the back. I'm just in the middle of a town, basically. I'm gonna make my way into the back, into the, into the front room, the bedroom, sorry. There's just not really enough space to do anything. We're moving the battery. That battery's way too heavy. <sighs> People walking past looking at me. I'm feeling very self-conscious. I can't. I, I can't move. Please, no one, call the police and say that there's some strange activity in the high street. Right, I'm gonna turn these lights off. Keep a keep a bit more of a low profile. There we go. Now, in theory, I can get my book and start reading. It's just like that. I'm not gonna read. I'm, I'm feeling very self-conscious right now that there's people out there looking in and looking at me. Um, that all works though. Wow, I'm really excited about that. I'm gonna turn the engine off. You might be able to hear the fan from the inverter. It's a little bit noisy. But... Having a drawer here is actually handy. It's, it feels quite nice having that there. Right, good night everyone. I'm going to go to bed. I don't think stealth camping is sort of, doesn't really fit my personality. I'd much rather camp somewhere which is like in the forest or away from, away from people basically. My travel plans for this year involve firstly travelling around the UK. In particular, I want to go to some of the wilderness and mountainous areas of Scotland. Then later on in the summer, I have a European road trip that I want to do with the aim to drive the length of the Alps and travel through 10 different countries. All that exciting stuff lies ahead, but I can't help but wonder whether doing all this in my little car is going to be practical or even possible. I'll see you in a bit once I've been to the loo somewhere. That was not a fun experience. I ran up the high street, turned left down an alley, found a football field and a piss next to a bush. Anyway, I'm freezing. <laughs> Heating on. I'm quite excited because I'm going to try charging my phone for the first time. Ta da! Now that I've slept the night in my newly converted VW Polo, I can give you a, a summary, a conclusion of how it went. What didn't go well was waking up to my car alarm this morning really loud. I think it's when I sat up it triggered a sensor or something. As you can see, there's a lot of condensation and water on the windscreen. In fact, on all the windows. It was, it was quite nice because it almost acted as like a tinted window so people couldn't look in, which was, which was actually decent. Things are going to mould pretty quick. Like if I sleep out of here for more than like a week or something, the, my bed sheets are going to mould. First breakfast in my car. Luckily, stay nice and easy. Bananas. 
So currently my trash can is down there. All the all the rubbish goes in the foot well. Basically, what I'm building up to is in September, I'm going on at least a one month road trip around Europe. I've got some really cool places that I want to visit along the way. And before September the 1st, I need a vehicle which is comfortable to live in. That That's, that's the aim. I thought I'd start very early on in the year because of course I don't know what I'm doing and it's gonna take me a lot of time to figure it out. I've realized it's very small. I've realized there's not much space in here. But these are all things that I needed to find out before I end up going on that adventure in September. And there's a lot more work to do. One of the biggest issues is the fact that my bed isn't flat. Time to make the transition into the front of the car. The easiest chips. I've got a few things to do today. I need to go shopping and some other bits. And then tonight we'll give it another shot and we'll we'll do some more stealth camping. We're gonna give it one more chance. Shopping. Um, I don't know much about washing up. Are these ones or these, these ones look better because they've got green on them. That's what I need, that van over there. That one, that white one. I noticed VW transport is everywhere now. Getting jealous of all these people with nice vans. Oh, that one would do. It's been a reasonably productive day today. Managed to get some shopping done, got some food, some other bits and pieces, and some cooking equipment for a video which I'm gonna be shooting very soon that I am incredibly excited to film. Oh my God, there it is, all the way from Japan. Uh, I also managed to check up on my bees, see how they were doing, which was nice. My bees look okay, however, there are lots of dead bees at the front of the hive, but I th believe that's quite normal for this time of year. The adult bees that have been living through the winter are coming to the end of their lives and then they basically die. The queen will now be laying loads more baby bees to replace these ones. It's a bit sad to see so many dead bees at the front of the hive, but life is a circle. There'll be new ones. And this evening I've just got back from a walk. It's currently six o'clock, which means it's getting towards that time of day where my stomach starts to rumble and I think a lot about food. And I've also got to try and find somewhere to sleep tonight. Hmm. Oh no. Oh, it looks like we've arrived at our destination. This is gonna be an interesting one. That's right, we're at McDonald's car park. This car park may be locked after 7 p.m. daily. currently just making my bed. So the way I arrange my sleeping setup is I have my duvet from home. It's quite a big duvet so I can lay it flat and then fold it in half. So I can lie on half of it and half of it is my, that goes over me and keeps me warm. And then I've just got a pillow which is nice and comfortable. I need the loo. Luckily I can use the McDonald's loo. This is cool. Like, I've got a, I've got a blue. This is luxury. Whew. And because I'm lazy, I'm not gonna get out of my car if I don't have to. There's a drive-through right there. Oh, the chicken Big Mac, or the Big Mac, or the big wrap, the big wrap. Blimey, there's too much choice. Mozzarella dippers. Once upon a time, we had to forage our food and catch it. And then people started growing food. And now you just drive to a speaker and you say what you want and it just comes out in a bag. Mad world. Hello, can I take your order? Hello. Order number 20, thank you. Thank you. Hmm, I just ordered food. Cheers. Wow. 
It's busy in there. It must be such a stressful working environment being in the kitchen there right now. Last night it was quite exciting. I felt on edge a lot of the time, but at the same time it was quite cozy and like people are outside and you're tucked in the tucked in a nice warm bed. Well, it wasn't actually that warm. I wonder what the temperature is now actually. Five degrees right now. Apparently it's gonna get down to like freezing tonight. So that'll be fun. A burger with chicken in it. And then I've got fries and then I've got more chicken. Look at that, beast. Bun on top, bun on bottom, but then there's another bun in the middle with two bits of chicken either side. What is burger sauce? Is it mayo mixed with ketchup? If I was better at talking, I could make mukbang YouTube videos. But unfortunately, I'm not very wise with words. I don't have much to say. But that would be a fun job, wouldn't it? What do you do for a living? I eat food. Yeah, it was alright. Chicken, dunk. I put up an Instagram post this morning saying how I, my car alarm went off when I woke up. And someone, in fact, a few people replied saying, oh, all you need to do is lock it with the button on the door rather than locking it with the keys. Because if, if you lock it with the keys, then the car thinks that you're outside the car. But if you lock it with this, it knows that you're inside so it won't set the alarm off. Pretty clever, eh? You could sit on that moon and go fishing off the end. This is what I'm going to be living with tonight. Did you see that? Look, there he is. Big rat. Whoa, he's gone. So we have a problem with camping in a car park and even at a McDonald's car park because I thought they would be open all night, but they're not and I need the toilet. And I can't be going to the toilet on the street because that's unacceptable, right? But I've got this. There's only two other cars in the car park and they've been sat there for a while. And I was thinking for a bit, I was like, what are they doing? Why aren't they, why aren't they leaving? Like it's one o'clock in the morning now. Like this is, I'm getting a bit worried. Like what are their intentions, you know? My imagination was, was thinking up lots of different things. And then I thought they're probably thinking exactly the same about the white polo on the other side of the car park. I'm definitely the most dodgy looking person in the car park tonight. It is empty. I think I'm gonna go to bed now. I'm gonna lock it there. I just started hearing the first bit of bird song and it was a very comforting sound because I have not been able to get to sleep much. It got really cold. I kind of want this night to be over. It's not been great. Oh. Someone just turned on the lights at McDonald's. So it must be morning. Thank you very much. I think the only thing that makes camping in a McDonald's car park fun is that you can wake up and just drive through and get your food. See you soon, McDonald's. That's a lie. I'm probably not gonna go there for a while. Whoa! I just camped in a McDonald's car park. <laughs> what? What did I think of stealth camping? Uh, I just felt so anxious like the whole night. I'm really happy to have tried it though and, and have done some stealth camping. But yeah, onwards and upwards. I'm excited to share some of the future trips I'm gonna go on because we're gonna go a bit further afield, further away from home to some more wilderness, beautiful places. So stay tuned. See ya.